rising. Mm -hmm. And Dennis, I'll make you a coat just in case, just in case I fall over and we need a co-host. And I'm going to do that. It's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. I mean, just never know when it's your time, you know? Never, um, know. You never know. <laughs> Transcription is available for those who need it. Hello, Zara in the chat. I'm always so, so happy to see you here. Nice to see you all here. I'm Katie Dichter. I am a librarian at Seattle Central. Um, I am going to say a few words and try to keep it so short because it's about Dennis Stenman today. Um, let me flip over to my notes. Okay, so welcome to COSI, Conversations on Social Issues. I already told you who I am. I'm Katie Dichter. Um, COSI has been going at Central for over 10 years, I believe. Um, Kelly McHenry and Kimberly Tate Malone were my colleagues slash predecessors who had an exceptionally large role in keeping this going for so many years. Um, and of course, all of you who participate. Um, I don't want to take a lot of time. So I'll say a land acknowledgement. Um, we acknowledge the unceded land we live on as the home of the Coast Salish people, the traditional home of all tribes and bands within the Duwamish, Suquamish, Tulalip, and Muckleshoot nations. I encourage all of us to consider what it means to be guests on this land and to actively acknowledge the Duwamish tribe by paying real rent. Let me post a real rent link in the chat. Also, the Duwamish um, went from having a petition for federal recognition to um, uh, filing a suit against the federal government for that recognition. So I also encourage you to look at the news and at the tribe's website and see what's happening with them and support them in this next move th that they are um, doing to pursue federal recognition. Uh, we also pause to recognize and acknowledge the labor upon which our country, state, and institution are built. We remember that our country is built on the labor of enslaved people who were kidnapped and brought to the United States from the African continent, and we recognize the continued contribution of their survivors. We also acknowledge all unpaid caregiving labor and immigrant labor, including voluntary, involuntary, trafficked, forced, and undocumented peoples who contributed to the building of our country and who continue to serve within our labor force. Okay, um, later I'll post a form in the chat for you to fill out it's short. It's to give us some feedback. And now I'm going to turn it over to Dennis Denman, who is the Director of Student Leadership at Central, who wants to bring a conversation to us about first-generation professional reflections, feeling insecure and unsure. Thank you so much, Dennis. Thank you so much, Katie. This is awesome. Getting set up here and want to get all of the Zoom buttons out of my face. Um, hope you all are doing out there in Zoom world. Um, it is a day. Uh, it is Thursday. We're happy the sun is somewhat out today. Um, and I think we're trying to do our best uh, here at this thing we call work. So I am going to uh, get all of the Zoom faces out of the way. Let's start from the beginning. I trust that you can see the screen, yes? Awesome, thank you so much, thank you so much. Um, and yes, I don't think I'll be bugged by the doorbell, Katie, but you might wanna not make me co-host because then I'll freak out. Uh, but like I was saying, um, happy Thursday, it's May 19th. Let's get this show on the road. I only have like not even an hour. This is so hard to cram all this in um, and talk to you all. Um, I really am trying to emphasize the conversation part of today. Um, so I have a few slides, but it's gonna hopefully be a conversation um, amongst colleagues and community. Um, who are we, who are me? Uh, this is what I do. Um, hopefully today, uh, if you don't know me, and I think I see most folks I know um, on the screen, um, Dennis D, you all should know me, but if you don't, I'm the Director of Student Leadership. I send away too many emails. Um, I'm the email guy to some students. I am the t-shirt guy to other students. Yesterday I was the pizza guy, um, as we shared way too much pizza. 
Um, it is becoming an occupational hazard of how much I eat around here. Um, Hot Mama's Pizza, $10 or $11 inflation. Um, I've been at Seattle Central about two and a half years at, um, here. Um, this is kind of my 10th year in higher ed and that freaks me out because I was like, no, I was just doing the thing that one time. I remember it like yesterday, but now I run into my now mentees and I'm like, oh, wow, your mentor, this is scary. This is frightening. So um, that that is something that I'm holding on to. I'm very proud of. Um, I'm very proud of being a first uh, generation college student as well, um, turned a first gen professional. So again, the, the, the topic for today is like, how do I navigate all that, right? Um, I went to uh, UCLA for undergrad, had no clue in a million years I'd be going to somebody's college. I was the first in my family to do so. And you just get there, and you're just trying to figure it out. And so I've been doing a lot of figuring it out um, along the way. So I'll definitely talk to you about that. Um, I'm I should have, I was supposed to update this and didn't. I'm a middle-aged person um, as a middle-aged black, gay, educated man living in Joe Biden's America during a whole pandemic um, and endemic. Is it going to end? We're not sure. Um, I always kind of do my whole, uh, no one ever knows how old I am because I try to like keep that on the hush. Don't be funny and put in the chat box please if you know um, but again I think even that speaks to some of my first genness and those identity struggles I have I know that I present very youthful and I got you know some youthful energy but if you all knew how really old I was you'd be shocked but I also know that when I show up um, in you know t-shirt and jeans dentist today I'm received differently than I am with shirt and tie dentist or even when I put on a hoodie and walk around central dentist it's always an interesting experience um outside of that um outside of my job my job job but my joke is um, I'm on the board for NASPA, so it's a professional association group for student affairs folks. Um, I do a lot of the stuff in the community college world with them. And then today, currently, I'm the sitting president for our Washington State uh, Council for Student Unions and Programs, aka it's CUSP, um, C-U-S-P. Um, and I, that is my newest badge of honor. I have no clue how in the world I became well, I do know how I became president. Um, I don't know how, how much in the world I have time to be the president, but um, it is a council of student life directors and friends. Um, and I get to be on that council. Um, a lot of folks are familiar with statewide board work. So it's kind of fun. It's really engaging. It's week two. Um, today, I feel like the worst council president ever, but next week I'll be good. Um, but even I will talk about those moments when I feel like the worst fill in the blank. And where does that come from? Um, so this is just a little bit about me, if you did not know that. Um, before we get started, um, again, thank you for doing the land acknowledgement, Katie. Um, a few acknowledgements and a few shout outs. I'll go again, the land that we are on, the Coast Salish people, um, home of the Duwamish, Suquamish, Tulalip, and Muckleshoot Nation. So again, um, I appreciate when we do our acknowledgements. I am also one who, you know, strives. I strive and I struggle. I'm going to be honest. Um, when we do our land acknowledgements, how do we go beyond just saying it? Um, I think we saw a great presentation last week on how do we not perform it? Um, how do I know in my role or in my capacity, what am I doing to help support our very Indigenous students? Our indigenous staff or faculty. Um, I have access to a lot of those emails. Am I sending emails that are thoughtful, intentional, and really trying to um, create space and make space for those folks? Um, so those are, uh, when I think about a land acknowledgement, that's what I'm always thinking of. And some days I don't do the land acknowledgement if I know that I have not actively done something um, this week, this day, this month, um, to uh, do more than just go beyond the land acknowledgement. So again, I invite you all to do that. Um, I'm also acknowledging the hardships and tragedies uh, that I think we all are facing. We're in the middle of um, a lot is going out going on outside of this Zoom box in this world today. Um, so just knowing that it's taking a lot for folks to just show up and even be on this Zoom screen, let alone uh, be showing up in buildings with so much that's going on in the world, in our families, in our neighborhoods, in our communities. We still have sick parents. We have kids. I don't know what's going on with school anymore. Um, so, so much is going on. So just really acknowledging that um, today, nothing has gone the way I thought it was going to be planned today. Um, so just even acknowledging like, oh, there's so many times I was going to say, Katie, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. But somehow we all find the strength and the resilience to be here to show up smiling or smizing through your amazing mask. 
Um, so I appreciate that. And then again, as we all sit on Zoom, just uncertainty and change, um, not only in the world, but also right here, right at home, right in our community college district, um, at our community college, what in the world? So um, definitely know that just so much is going on in folks' minds and hearts, and so just acknowledging that. Um, as we try to get through this. Um, special th thanks to, again, Kimberly, Kate, Tate Malone, and Katie Dichter, um, our faculty librarians and our coordinators. Um, I've been dragging my feet to get to a COSI talk, and so these two have definitely been helpful and very inspirational in getting me here um, to today, May 19th. I think we started talking about this maybe back in fall uh, with Kimberly, and then maybe I kind of said something in winter, and then Katie drugged me and, you know, made me set a date, and we are here, and thank you. So thank you so much um, to Dr. Latanya Reese Miles, my really great friend, my mentor. Um, I consider her the MVP of all things first gen. Um, she is a faculty, well, was a faculty, well, is a faculty member who's really gotten first gen students and first gen, first gen initiatives off on the map. Um, and so she's really great. So I think she'll get a recording of this and she'll love it. Um, I, I saw her at a conference and she her like children are like, graduating from college and I'm like oh gosh I'm really old if your children are graduating from college so don't remind me um to my great friend and and team over at trio Nestle Bravo and the entire trio staff um y'all are just amazing we don't get to engage as much but when we engage and work together we have the best time ever best community ever best anything ever um and again I'm a formal trio kid so I just love whenever I can support first gen students and now professionals everywhere um, so those are my shout outs. I have more, but we got to keep going because I only have so much time. Um, how did we get to here today? Um, just again, um, for context, um, I was originally scheduling my student government for the spring quarters COSI. I was just doing my job and somehow, some way I said, well, I guess I could do something. I've had this burning idea in the back of my head, um, but I wouldn't know what to talk about, uh, Kimberly or Katie, like what would I talk about? Um, this quarter, at least maybe this year, I've been trying to figure out why do I work so darn much? I'm a struggling workaholic. Um, you all, some of you on the screen know the life. Uh, where I really know I need to stop working and I don't know how to close the laptop and then working at home has totally busted all of our lives and boundaries. Um, and I think um, through all of that, trying to unpack, right? Um, where did this energy or this, you know, nervousness about I gotta just be on, I gotta work, where did that all come from? Um, I think and the literature really does support like, oh, I'm a first generation college student. These are some of these skills that I relied on as a college student that now is translating into my work life. Like, oh, okay, I just wanna make sure I'm on top of everything. I don't wanna fail. I don't wanna get kicked out. Um, originally, the title of today uh, today's talk was really, they're not going to fire you. Um, chill out. But that's a, an ongoing mental thing that I have going on. And I'm just like, where is that coming from? Uh, also, the same time that I was just trying to figure out my life, new year, new me, I'm going to stop working so hard. Uh, this really great book came out as well uh, from NASPA and Mary Blanchard Wallace. Um, essentially, it's a book on first generation professionals in higher ed strategies of the work world. Um, it is an amazing book. I definitely have links for you a little bit later um, if you're a first gener. And it actually, the book is right here in front of me. Ha ha ha. Um, a really great book, short book, real short, great chapters. Um, I've shared it with a few folks, and it's just really an, a really affirming book um, that helps me articulate what in the world I'm going through um, as this first generation professional. Um, I'm in a mid-level position or, you know, they say mid-management or whatever. Um, you're not too high, but you're not you're too low, but you're trying to help everybody and just where's the roadmap? There is not one. Um, there's no book. I think that's some going joke that I make around here to new directors or new assistant directors. Like, okay, if you're looking for the, the manual, it's not written yet. Uh, we just make it up. Uh, but hopefully somebody writes that so we all can get copies. Um, so that's how we got here today. And I think that's how I arrived at my topic. Um, pictured this. Um, it says, it's fair to say I don't know what I'm doing. Like, uh, I like to plot my life and proceed carefully, but life doesn't always follow a plan. Uh, so this is a quote from Lisa C. Um, I originally had a different quote and then my day took, got turned way upside down. Even this is like seven in the morning. I was like, all right, cool. I guess we won't be doing that. And so I had changed quotes because I had saw this earlier. 
Um, no matter how much you think you have this figured out or uh, you have a plan, um, life is going to come by, uh, which is very similar to student life in the world of my work. Uh, student life, it moves and flows every single day. There's never a dull moment. Something is always going to happen. As much as we plan for the best, we got to plan for the worst and have all the backup plans and everything needed. Um, but all that to say is that I, I always kind of feel like I never know what I'm really doing um, in this job or when I interact with students or when I'm like organizing and I'm like, I guess this makes sense. I don't know. Um, but again, where does that I don't know energy come from? Um, again, I think it's because I, I'm coming to grips with my first gen uh, professional identity. Um, and I doubt myself a lot. I doubt myself way too much. And so even when you're in a position and it's a cool job and everyone thinks, you know, I got it going on internally, I am freaking out or I'm, you know, somewhat disappointed. We had an event just yesterday. Um, it was actually a great event. Students turned out. Of course, we lured them with food. They did our activity. The staff was like, oh, this is a great turnout. The guest people, speaker folks, they were like, oh, this is great. This is great. I'm still in the background like, yeah, it could have been better, though. I really should have had like 10 more bodies in here. It would have been awesome if I just had 10 more bodies. And it's like, Dennis, where is that coming from? You had a great event. Uh, a lot of work, a lot of energy went into it. And everyone was pleased. But why I'm internally, I'm like, ah, it still wasn't great. Um, I think, again, it goes back to just kind of impacting some of that uh, energy of being first gen and even I think some of my imposter uh, syndrome that I think was my key to move to the next slide. No, not yet. Um, so I'll get back to that um, in two seconds. So, um, but I think that nugget there is that, you know, even me, I struggle with, I think, perfectionism. I don't like that word, but that's what I'm going to say today is perfectionism. I don't think I'm the most perfect person, but my boss, he was on the call, he said, oh, yeah, you're perfectionist. I was like, no, it doesn't. It doesn't have to be perfect. He's like, then if it's not your way, then you're going to do it your way. I was like, mm, okay. So things to let go. As I'm trying to, again, I'm a struggling workaholic, and maybe I don't have to edit it, everything and be a part of everything. Or as I'm learning, you know, I don't have to go to every meeting because I got staff now. I can delegate that stuff. It's like, yes, you all are taking care of it. Um, don't let me get in the middle of it because if I do, you know how it goes. Um, let me tell you about the office that I didn't feel like I deserved. Um, this, um, in addition to kind of reading this book, um, I think the book came out in January, me, me trying to figure out my life um, and why am I working so much. Um, I want to show you a picture of my office. Um, if you've been to my office, a lot of you have it. So here's a pitch to come on over to student leadership to come see all the greatness that happens over across the street in the student leadership building. Um, this is my office. And so um, on the 17th of February, I think it was the fine, it was finally the aha light bulb moment that, oh my gosh, this is the director's office. Oh my gosh, I actually feel like I'm the director of student leadership after you know doing this job for two years right um so let's unpack that a little um i think i got the job december of 2019 um and so i was on campus january february and then we all went home in march right so one i was already feeling defeated because i had to go home um and then we thought we were just going home for a couple weeks maybe a couple months oh we'll be back in summer oh wow i think this is our umpteenth return to campus right and so um in the in you know, in early 2020, 2020 um, I moved into this office space. It was weird. It didn't, it was, it's a really big office. This angle doesn't really show you the best. And this angle behind me isn't that great either. It's a huge office, right? And I was just like, oh, I've, I think I've arrived. I'm here. Previously, I was an assistant director. Um, my office wasn't this big. So this director office, it was a lot. And then also I was just feeling like, uh, I don't think I'm the director yet. Why? Because I was like, mm, they're probably gonna fire me in two months. Um, I still had at one point in time, I said, oh, I think it's right there. I still had like my moving inbox because again, I joined Central December. So I was moving into the office and I was like, oh, I'll put some things up eventually. Um, eventually became January, eventually became February, and then we went home. So I still had like my moving inbox slash that's also my moving out box because I'm like, oh, they're going to fire me. They're going to help. They're going to figure out that I'm not the greatest thing ever or that I'm making this stuff up. They're just going to fire me. So I always had this box, this grab and go box because I just for whatever reason in my head, I have a whole scenario playing out that, yeah, 
<laughs> somebody's gonna say, yeah, Dennis, your time's up. It's good. Uh, you're not what we thought you were gonna be. Um, I'm jumping stories, but back to this office, back to this office. Um, I just didn't feel like it was my office. It didn't, it just didn't feel like me. I was used to a smaller space, a smaller setting. Um, in one of these returns to work or to campus, um, I moved out of this office actually. Um, I said, knew me, trying to figure it out. I don't like this office anymore, Ricardo. I'm gonna go to the back corner office, which is bam. This bad boy right here. I was like, I got it. This works. It's a teeny tiny office, kind of raggedy. Um, that's some good IKEA furniture. That desk is all over the place. The chair is ratty, but it was like it. It was perfect. It was me. I felt that this was home. I'm gonna make this work. Um, and for a while, I did. For like a long while, I did. I think I was back there for most of fall, winter. Yeah, it's actually summer. Yes, yeah, so I was back there for a couple of months. Um, I say that to say I think I was comfortable in this space because it was such a small space. Um, and I think I'm equating that to I think I felt very small, um, not physically. I know those are jokes. I know someone laughed. But yes, I'm a small person. Um, but I think mentally I was feeling small that no, I hadn't arrived at the director's seat. I'm not as leader on campus. I'm just here playing like what until somebody figures me out. And I grab my box and I'm back home somewhere. Um, so I think the small office, um, that's what that represented for me. Um, I was comfortable in a smaller space. I didn't need a big old office. I didn't, you know, I didn't need much. I can make it work because generally speaking, I just make it work. But also first generation college student literature says first gen students, we make it work. Uh, we're very resilient. We don't need a whole lot of space. We'll make it work. Um, so it was, I think again, February where I finally moved back into my office and I actually decorated it. Um, this is me decorating it. Um, me decorating it actually means putting my diplomas on the wall. I never really do that. I never really put anything on the wall. Cause again, I was like, oh yeah, gonna figure me out and I'm gonna get out. So don't wanna put anything up. Don't wanna get too permanent. But I did put the diplomas on the wall right in my face. Um, I'm so proud of those diplomas. I'm so proud of what I've done and been able to accomplish. And I think again, on this day, finally in February, it's dark, as you can see, I was there late. I don't know where the clock is. I'm pretty sure I was there late. A lot of people uh, know that I work a little too late sometimes. But this was my, I had arrived moment. And it, I think I was emotional this day because I kind of cleaned up the office, set it up the way I wanted it to set it up. Um, and I finally said, oh, I think I'm actually the director now. Like me personally, my, my body and my soul is just like, yeah, I'm the director. This works. I'm supposed to be here. But again, it took me, two years to kind of figure that out or come to that point. Um, so this is that one picture that I was like, huh, Katie, I'm ready to do my first gen workshop. I know exactly what I'm talking about. And I think this was that day or that night that I said, I'm doing it. Um, let me keep going. There's the ratty office. I love the ratty office. It works. We still got to update it because it's, it's, it's awful. Um, imposter syndrome is real. I think if you've heard me talk um, a lot of, again, not sure, self-doubt, I don't know what's going on. I didn't think I was the director for two whole years. What is wrong with me, right? Um, this is a cute little graphic that I pulled from the internet that kind of just goes through the different types of imposter syndrome. I think you all know there's a lot of literature on it. Um, again, I didn't want to go lecture with you all and give you definitions, um, but these are definitely the types of imposter syndrome that I kind of go through. But when I read through it all, I feel like we all go through it. Um, superhero, for sure. I believe I have a cape on um, all the time. I'm actually on campus today because I was like, I'm going to be a super person today and make something happen. Um, so I'm here, you know, managing things on the side. Um, an expert, um, I'm always trying to read more and more and more because I never like, oh, I don't know what's happening. So I should probably read on books about leadership and management. And I, I enjoy my budget book today. I enjoy my budget book a lot now. Like, all right, I'm managing budgets. Let's get this together, Dennis. Um, again, there's my good perfectionist uh, self and in, even soloist. I never, I am guilty. I do not ask for help. I, I struggle so hard. I have to be not even sick because I even went through my whole bout of COVID like, you know, Christmas break. And I, I didn't tell anybody and they're like, this, what's going on? Why didn't you say anything? I, said, I can figure it out. Uh, I can do this. I don't even, I, I didn't want to inconvenience anybody. It was already inconvenienced. And I was like sick, sick. Um, luckily, I was at home by myself anyway. Holidays were 
terrible, but I got through it. Um, so again, um, these are things that I not only first gen folks deal with, but I think folks looking at the screen, I'm like, I know a lot of y'all on this screen. This is all you as well. I'm not the only one, so I'm in good company. So again, first gen folks, um, we all go through this. Uh, we're all trying to navigate the different types of imposter syndrome. We do belong in places. We did get the job. They're not going to take it back. They're not going to hire fire you. Um, and I think once we kind of arrive, like I did with the office moment, um, I feel so less stressed, so less anxious, so less pressure that I just put on myself. I do set high, high, super high goals. And I get upset when I don't meet them. So even kind of normal setting some of my goals a little bit because I'm not Superman and I can't achieve it all because if I did that, then I wouldn't sleep. And why am I tossing and turning at night? Because I'm thinking about work a little too much. Um, so I hope all of that made sense. I hope all of that made sense. I'm um, doing good on time. Insecure. Um, as you all know, uh, some of this inspiration came from the wonderful show called Insecure, starring uh, Issa Rae. Um, it's a beautiful, amazing show that it popped on and changed all of our lives. Um, and now it's gone and it's tragic because I love that show, but I'm replaying every episode. Um, on days where I don't feel like I'm enough, I do feel like I'm Issa Rae and I have to wake up and talk to myself in the mirror and try to get pumped up for the day um, because you know, I have students, they need me. I have staff now, they need me. Um, my students are a little bit more needy this year than normal. Uh, so you all know what that means. Um, so how do I can show up and at least be the best version of myself or at least, yeah, that's actually pretty good. The better and the, maybe the best version of myself even when I don't feel like it always. Um, so Insecure helps me uh, get through that. Issa Rae is a great character. Um, her friends, her tribe, it's set in LA, so I'm from LA. So I just felt like, oh, I know where that is. I know where that is. I know where that is. It was great. Um, it does get better um, in feeling. Um, it does get better. Um, saying again, it took me to have a whole light bulb moment two years after a whole job sitting in an office by myself to be like, oh, I can do this. This is my job. I'm really good at it. I'm exceptionally good at it. And I wish somebody would try um, to do all the things that I am so that I do. Um, and again, I hate it because I feel very uncomfortable talking about myself, but I'm pretty good at what I do. Um, so it gets really uh, better. Um, and again, the self-doubt and the insecurities, they kind of work I don't want to say they go away, but once after you arrive to that moment, um, you see a lot more clarity and you're like, oh, yeah, I am working too many hours for no reason to do what? To be perfect. Let go of perfectionism. Um, know the signs. I know when I, you know, my students laugh. They say, Dennis, uh, I think you need a Snickers bar. I said, oh, no, am I not being myself? Yes, you're not being yourself. Or I'm a little on edge. So I just know the signs. Um, those signs also mean I need to take care of myself. I need to take some time off. Go leave a couple out. No, go uh, take some time away um, or just unplug or just stop worrying about it. Um, embrace the feelings. I'm one of those people who are like, I don't have feelings. I'm just going to be stone cold and rock hard. And blah. and then it takes, you know, the world to fall to pieces. And I'm just like, ah, why is everything happening? So again, I'm that friend. If you know that friend, I'm that friend. Um, again, also uh, as ways to cope and get through it, talk to other friends, talk to professionals, uh, talk to other first gen professionals, but also talk to the therapist. Because a lot of this unpacking, I got my therapist on speed dial and it's through Zoom. So it's great. I don't have to go to her office no more. This is amazing. I love it. Um, and again, my daily affirmation is I'm not going to get fired today. Um, so guess what? It's going to be okay. I'm doing good work. Can't get fired. No one's going to figure me out today. Um, and again, show up and be the best you or at least the best version of me. Um, so that's my insecure. The poster at the top says low key striving. I really am low key. Uh, um, and I'm very awkward on a good day, just like Issa Rae. Uh, I'm very awkward on a good day, but you got to really know me to know those parts of me. Um, a couple of more slides, and I swear I am done. The clock is behind me, not in front of me. Uh, first generation professionals are influencers. Uh, the quote at the top says, first generation professionals working in higher education are influencers. Their journeys are varied, but their themes of resilience, strong work ethic, and a connection to community highlight success 
stories of success. Um, I think um, I read this in the book that I was highlighting um, and I cried. I literally cried because I never saw myself as an influencer ever. I was like, what? Um, I think our story has always been the struggle of the first gen student or the struggle of the person of color or the struggle of the black male, um, the struggle of the LGBTQ person. Um, and so again, chapter one is like, First generation professionals, you're influencers because you've gone through so much and you've navigated these interesting obstacles um, that we bring a different perspective to our work. We bring a different flavor, um, a flavor to our work. Um, you know, I'm pretty optimistic and I'm pretty, you know, fun to be around. We have good committees. If you're on a committee with me that I'm at least running, we have a great time because. Uh, we, we, we work, but we spend a little too much time laughing. Um, our staff meetings are way too fun. And I'm just like, yeah, if the president were to walk in, I'm pretty sure. Or I think if our president walked in, she would laugh with us. But yes, we have a lot of fun. Um, and I think that that speaks to just, uh, we've gone through so much. Uh, why, why, why so serious, right? I think that was a Batman quote. I don't know where that came from. Um, I think about all of that um, when I speak of that bullet um, that says, as a first year professional, I think the question to myself was, what do I hope to give? Um, I really hope to give hope to others, um, particularly our students, first generation students, just trying to figure it out. Um, but also now that I'm a mentor, younger professionals who are figuring out, looking for the manual, and then just other colleagues. Um, even during these crazy times, we don't know which way is up at any given day of the week. I don't even know which way is up. But I was like, hey, we're going to get through this day. It's going to be a great day. Um, maybe I'll get to that email. Maybe I won't. Um, and we do best by our students and the communities that we serve. Um, and then, of course, just uh, showing others how to move uh, through all of these social situations and institutions. I've, this is now my fourth institution. Um, and I was unpacking that a little bit. I was uh, preparing this. I was like, oh, am I a jumper? I don't think I'm a jumper. I think I just know how to navigate. I've done the four year, done four year on the east side, four year on the west side. I went up north to a community college. Now I'm in central, and I'm just like, oh, I think I just know how to navigate and move around. Uh, but I'm like, ah, this, am I doing that millennial thing? I don't know. But um, I think again, that speaks to us being influencers when we're introducing new programs, new ideas. Uh, Fellows Friday, you all know I run a program. Um, I think today we would call ourselves a podcast because it's really is a host uh, and we go through all the segments and it's a normal thing now. Um, the student government folks are like, yeah, we kind of like this whole conversation. I even think our president loves conversation with the president. How can we make it a talk show and just doing different innovative things like that. Um, our students would love to take over TikTok and Instagram and do things like that. And I was like, ah, I'll mildly support it um, and we can make it work. So uh, remember that you are influenced but again, this was really affirming to me because I never had saw myself as an influencer. I was like, I'm just Dennis. I just show up to work and run my mouth and have a good time. Um, again, first year professionals are res resilient. Um, this paragraph kind of unpacks uh, what does um, unpacking the hidden curriculum, what does that mean? Um, it's, it's a lot. It's navigating both the hidden curriculum and workplace expectations. So I think in college, you had to figure this out. So for me, hidden curriculum was, I didn't have a choice if I wanted to go to tutoring or not. I had to go to tutoring. It was part of my schedule because you go to tutoring to get extra help because that's how I needed to get an A. Um, my original introduction to tutoring was like, oh no, I'm smart. I'm in college. I don't need tutoring. Tutoring is for stupid people or dumb people. That's not me because I'm brilliant. And then my first quarter, I was failing everything and didn't know how to write anything. And so I would not go to tutoring. And then I learned, oh, tutoring, you need this to be successful. So just like you register for classes, you register for tutoring side by side. It's not an option for me, or a lot. I think a lot of first geners. First, the same thing can be said about office hours. It's not an option to not go to op you know office hours. You make it. You put in your schedule to go to office hours. Um, so similarly, in the workplace, we do have unwritten rules or protocols that you kind of have to maneuver a little bit. Uh, reputation building is important. Hopefully you have a good reputation. I hope I have a good reputation. I don't know what folks say about me. I know they say I do not get back to an email. I know that for sure. I'll take that. Um, I don't get back to in like a day. I need like a couple, uh, but I get back to you. Um, or more, more folks like to catch me in the hallway, but they catch me in the hallway and I'm not ready to respond to that email right in the hallway. Um, 
Um, building relationships is a part of it. Um, how are you able to partner with other colleagues and staff? I've partnered and met a lot of you all, but I think relationship building is important. And then managing up, um, these are all things that I didn't know what I was doing, but my supervisor was like, oh, we love this, this is great. You're doing this thing called managing up. I'm like, what, what's that? I had to Google that. Um, but essentially um, I anticipate my supervisor's needs almost a little too well. But again, I know my supervisor, they're busy just like I'm busy. So if I can help them, you know, here's the talking points, you got five minutes, go. And they're like, how did you know to do this? I did it. I just know that you don't have time and you make it all up. So if you're gonna make it up, I need you to talk on these points in any kind of order and you got five minutes. And my supervisor talks a lot, so I gotta be strict about that five minutes. I love my supervisor. The point is, um, these are all first gen skills that I picked up that are now working in my favor in the workplace. Um, and so Dr. Uh, Latina Reese Miles and uh, folks in the book, they talk about that a lot. Oh, wow, I'm already here. Yes. Um, so again, it gets better. Uh, feeling insecure, unsure. Uh, we are influencers. We're really awesome. If you did not know, uh, we're very resilient. So we bounced back. I, um, I think we were recently in a talk or a call with Dr. Rosie from South. Uh, she gave us the, the juggling balls kind of analogy. Um, we're trying to catch so many balls in the air and juggle as many things as possible. But guess what? Generally speaking, they're all made of rubber. So we'll always bounce, they'll always bounce back or bounce up. Or if you drop them all, it's not the end of the world. You just pick them back up and you keep on juggling. So it was a good kind of just quick leadership takeaway that I appreciate hearing um, again, um, as we're all trying to juggle, especially this thing called spring quarter. Like, ah, can we graduate already? Um, here are a couple of resources. I'll link these to you in a second. Um, book uh, that I referred to, plus the ways to deal with imposter syndrome, plus um, community cultural wealth. Um, if I have more time, we will talk all about this and more. I think some folks are familiar with it, uh, but in summary, uh, we bring a lot of capitals to work and to what we do. Um, and so um, it's about navigating. A lot of first gen students navigate um, their worlds, and this is the wealth that they bring. It might not be monetary wealth, I'm the richest person alive, but uh, navigational capital, family capital, linguistic capital. Um, these are all things that you're building your wealth bucket um, in one way or another. So um, definitely theoretical framework for all the theory people out there that need something. And I think that's all of my slides. Bam, I think I'm done, Katie. Um, so that was going way, 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 way too fast, but I wanted to open the floor Oh, I got time. I wanted to open the floor just to say, um, to see if anybody had questions on anything I talked about because I went way fast or anything to unpack or anything like that. So take it away. Well, I want to say, I don't know if you're looking at the chat, Dennis, and I don't know if you gave this talk to get all of your colleagues to shower you with compliments, but that's what's happening. Michaela says you're incredible at what you do. Zara seconds that. Yes, Kayla, Dennis, you're definitely exceptional at your job. Kimberly Tate Malone, and you know Kimberly's never wrong, says you have a phenomenal reputation. Uh, Paul Carter says, Dennis, when I saw you were the host, I had to check this out. <laughs> Lynn, my boss says, whenever I hear your name mentioned in meetings, and it is often because influencer, there are smiles and huge respect for you and what you do. Nestle Bravo has been seconding all these things in the chat. Um, oh, and Caro as well. Kirstie Thomas says truth. Yeah, that's what's happening in the chat. Awesome, the chat box is great. I know it goes down to the chat. I cannot see the chat. So this is awesome. Thanks friends. I appreciate it all. Again, I wish I could tell you and I wish I had the perfect answer for why I have all these conversations or Issa Rae moments in my head that oh, I'm gonna get fired today or you know why do I feel like I'm the worst director ever like I literally go in Ricardo's office and just I'm doing the worst job ever and he's just laughing and I'm I'm just like dramatic I'm, I have I have a flair for the theatrics I'm not gonna lie and you know <laughs> Ricardo's super there to be supportive and just talk me out of my head um, and I wish again I had the solution for that um, that's probably for the next cozy talk when someone else has the solution so I can take that uh, book and run with it. Um, so definitely thank you. Um, but yeah, questions, comments, transparency. This is me trying to just be me today. Um, and the wonderful 
conversations that go on in my head out loud to the rest of you all. Brianna. Yeah. Hi, I see you trying to get people to raise their hands. <laughs> I was like, I might as well. Um, you had mentioned two writings that, um, that you kind of just sped by. I'd like to see those on your uh, presentation. Um, I just want to say you, you did a very good you know, job uh, even communicating with everybody in this group. And as you see, you have a very good support system. So I admire, you know, the fact that you're open and as somebody just said, your transparency, it's just amazing. Thank you so much. I just try to be, I don't want to say to be the leader, but I wish I had. Um, I'm learning a lot from leaders and I'm learning transparency is important. And some days I don't always have the answer or, hey, I'm a hot mess today. Um, tomorrow is a different story. Um, I think my immediate staff, they appreciate that about me. And then I think I'm a little too transparent. And then they're like, oh, okay, you're doing too much. I said, okay, just letting you all know, I'm either making it up today or, or some of the things, but also I laugh when I say that. Some of the things that they think I make up, they're like, oh, you actually had planned this time. I said, oh yeah, I figured, I, I know you all right now. So it's, it's kind of what I do, but I definitely trying to be uh, more transparent. Um, even our um, amazing president, Dr. Yoshiko, uh, she's even shared how just authentic she is in her leadership. And I'm always like, oh, I wish I could just be half as authentic, but you're great. Um, and now I think as I'm, you know, going through and unpacking what it means to be a first year professional, I was like, oh, this is might be the authentic leadership that Dr. Yoshiko was talking about. Um, and how can you just show up and be more of you and not, you know, the version that I want you all to see. Yeah, like I just said, I, I think I was one of the first people to utilize the chat, but I, I had mentioned that it honestly takes it one day at a time in order to make it to tomorrow. And if you can do that, you know, you're already succeeding at living your own life. Any other thoughts? folks in the chat box. Oh, there's the form. Um, I've hyperlinked the book that I was referring to, and I need to hyperlink one more other link for you all. I put myself in stack. Um, Dennis, I'm thinking about students in my classroom. And you talked a lot about student support services like tutoring and office hours. Um, I'm just wondering, was there anything like when you were in your first college class, was there anything like specific that you would have wanted your instructors to do in terms of like recognizing you, seeing you, like really making you feel like you're not gonna fail this class and then you're not gonna get fired from your job later? Good question. Um, I think I'll take you back to my first uh, maybe grad school class. Cause again, that was even later where I'm just like, oh, I'm smart. Wow, I'm in a grad program, right? Um, I, was, I did a master's program at UW. Um, I think the instructor, uh, what I appreciate about them is that for the most part, in so many words, and, I, and you have to decode what they're saying, but in so many words, they were very, very reassuring. Like, hey, student, you already got an A in the class. You already got an A. You just have to do the work. And I'm like, oh, why don't they tell us that in undergrad class? This is so, we're so stressed. Um, so again, it was, it was a different, I think it was maybe positive reinforcement maybe a little bit, because it was like, okay, I already have it and I can see the A. Because again, I was already scared out of my mind because I didn't know what I was doing in the master's program. I barely got through college and now I signed up for the master's. What am I thinking? Um, and so I think of that instructor, um, they were very kind of, again, you already have the A, you just got to do a lot of work. Cool, you can do the work, you got the A. I said, oh, okay, cool. Um, I think that instructor also provided um, just space for us to talk um, as a class about just how we're feeling about the work and how to be successful. Um, 
as well as I'm thinking back to maybe a first year student in a first year class. Um, I think em emphasizing that office hours, when we say that we're here, we, we wanna see you before, before the sky falls, before the midterm round, or before the dog ate my homework and the computer died and I had to go to Ikea and run, not Ikea, Best Buy. So encouraging students to come visit me before something happens. Um, I should know who, well, in, well, again, my context is I went to a big old university, but I think today's time, I think all instructors should know who their students are. Um, so I think the encouragement is, I wanna know you more than just the campus post to the paper swing by, say hello. Again, I know it's a little bit hard. We're in hybrid world and nobody knows what office hours is, but um, I think just reaching out, um, having students be transparent about their struggles with student success or their thoughts of what it means to be a successful student. And then how can you just again support them? Let them know that they have a, we just got to do work. Um, I think we might start them at, you know, everybody is on a zero and it's the one test that you know, you need to get up that to get the A. So I hope that answers your question a little bit. Yeah. Good question. I always appreciate when my instructors knew my name. So that was great. So again, knowing names, and I know we struggle with that, even I do like, but really knowing your student's name and calling on them by name, and all the cool instructor tricks where, you know, you're talking about nothing and you might say Dennis and oh crap, they said my name. One, not to call me out, but oh, whoa, they're, they're paying attention to me. Okay, let me look like I got it together. So that helps, that helps. Any more questions? You can't be that quiet. Um, if I had more time, um, I would have done the whole little spinny wheel thing. I have an extra copy of this wonderful book. If anybody would love a copy, um, I'm sure we're going to get one in the library, but if anybody would love this copy to be just so in love with this book, like I'm in love with this book, uh, please let me know uh, um, and I can get you a copy. Um, can you recall how you felt when you were interviewed in the past relating to imposter? Oh, that will probably be the next cozy talk because let me tell you, I've been through a lot of interviews, uh, job interviews. As you all know, higher ed is it's a gauntlet of interviews and rounds and so much. Um, for me, um, I remember one interview where I was just like, I know I don't have this job. Um, I went into the room and saw everybody in the room. Nobody looked like me. Great. And Nobody was anywhere near my, you know, perceived age, right? And I was like, all right, I don't have it. So in my head, it was like, okay, this is a practice round, Dennis. So do your best, but no, you don't have it. And again, I don't know why my expectations were so low not to get it. Well, I think I do. So anywho, the point is, um, I was surprised when I got that job. I said, wait, you're kidding me. That job that all of you were in there and nobody really um so i have a lot of interview stories uh good and bad um but trying to just navigate again uh doing some of the Issa Rae talks in the mirror positive affirmations funny raps or songs uh, whatever your your playlist is in the car before you get out of the garage in central i know some of you do that um pump that up um go into your interview and just kind of knock it out the park and for whatever reason um the imposter syndrome doesn't sneak up then, but I'm but, but I'm always like my one fear is like oh Dennis complete your sentence I always leave them on like a dot 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 I never like can finish the sentence so I'm always like oh, did I finish the sentence I think I finished the sentence tell me if I didn't finish the sentence or I get in a bad habit of doing an interview where I like yeah I think I answered that question all parts of it sure did I answer the question and I need to stop doing that because that looks a little unnerving but I'm always like yeah. I think that's all of the question and I think I might have answered. Next question. So little tricks that help, and that helps call me to make sure I did everything, but also I figured lets people know, okay, I think he's good, yeah. Or a little nervous, yeah. But yeah, if you want internet interview tips, I got it all day long. And look at us, 1251. You're welcome to stay and chat more 
Um, definitely do the form. We want your feedback. We need your feedback. Do the survey. More than one word, please. Please don't be like students and give us one word. We need a sentence, a whole full sentence with a period. Thank you. Period. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we totally could do it. I think the students would love it. Uh, first gen, let's, if we, hey, if you're serious, Katie, uh, first gen week is the week of November 8th. There's something during that week. Leslie can tell you. Um, so let's put Okosi on that Thursday or whatever. Um, but yeah, there's national first gen week and we kind of do something for our first gen students. So you're all welcome. Here's your six months in advance notice. So thank you. And I hope I answered Abigail's question. Sorry, yes, yeah, totally. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you all for being here. It has been great. Um, I hope you enjoy the presentation. We'll get the slide deck over to Katie and the recording of. I think I survived it, so I'm going to go like cry. I totally forgot to back up and let you all see my shirt. I'm wearing my Issa Rae shirt. Um, rooting for everybody black. Issa Rae said it at an Oscars event a couple months ago. I got nervous and forgot to show you the whole shirt. That was the whole point of this presentation today. But yes, uh, rooting for everybody black. Issa Rae is awesome and just a cultural icon. I, I saw Zara. Zara, did you have your hand up? Did I imagine that? I just wanted to say thank you. That's it. Thank you so much. This was really wonderful. You're really wonderful. I I feel like, oh, I got so many aha moments just listening to you. So I feel really seen through you, which I really, really appreciate right now. Um, and I think it just is a testament to how wonderful you are at what you do. So thank you. Thank you. You are great. You are awesome. Again, I always hope that you all got something away from this. I know I have a lot of fun and we have jokes, but I'm always in the back of my head. I hope you learned something, learn something. But yes, this is a testament that you're learning something. So um, whatever I can do, please let me know. If you need me to come to your classrooms and do all the things, I can do all the things too. Thanks so much, Dennis. Appreciate you. What happened with Android users? I know, oh. I feel like that's worth voicing, Lynn. That's amazing. Yeah, you can choose Issa Rae to be the voice on your navigation. Amazing, this is why we do Team Android, not Team Apple, because we have amazing sound. And on navigation. Thank you, Dennis. And I, can, I, will, I will not be able to remember exactly where that you make that choice, but at some point I made that choice and it's so fun. Love awesome, it. this is great. This is great. Awesome, folks. We're wrapping up. My students outside, like Dennis, I need those interview questions. Okay, I got to go finish typing them up. Um, I hope this was helpful. Thank you all for coming out. Katie, thank you again for the opportunity. Um, have a great day. I Dennis, hope Nathan you. is thrilled with my slide deck. Nathan's going to talk about me later, I'm sure. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. I saved the chat notes so I can see all the things that people said. Um, and I hang them up on the wall. Yes. Okay, see ya later. Bye.